iOS, it's only Sport Mart, a different lock and wall. We're in France covering the Rugby World Cup. And what a treat, what a ple- pleasure and a privilege it always is to get this man on the show with us. Played for the All Blacks between 2004 and 15, 94 caps, 126 for the Canes, and a two time Rugby World Cup winner. Welcome back, Conrad Smith. Always a pleasure. Never a chore to talk to you, Martin. Oh, mate, I tell you what, let's go back to last weekend against Ireland to start with. We had Shag on the programme a little earlier. He said he was jumping up and yelling in front of the TV. He said it was the best game of rugby he'd seen for a while. How did, how did, how did, how did, uh, how did you cope with it? Yeah, I, I was much the same. I was you know, lucky enough to be, to be at the ground. I actually took our, um, took our kids, so it was the first time in the family had all been to a game and Mate, we'll, uh, it'll, we'll cherish it for the rest of our lives. It was something, uh, the game itself, the atmosphere, obviously us winning made it uh, all the sweeter, but it was just a, yeah, it was an incredible game of rugby. Yeah, I thought it was the single best game I've ever been at. Yep, I, I, I agree. I said that, yeah, during the game. I, I actually said it, because it's a funny thing, you know, when you win those games, everyone's like, oh, of course, but I, I wouldn't have been surprised, you know, if the... I didn't expect that we were defending that well, but if the Irish scored at the end, I, I'd still like to think that I'd say the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was yeah, just yeah, yeah. two teams, you know, I, I just felt that way towards the end. I was like, man, even if we lose this, it's just uh, it's an incredible game of rugby. So all the better that we won. And you're going to come back to Paris, obviously, for the semi final. So tell us how that all kind of works, because you actually live, you've got a house outside of Paris, haven't you? Uh, down in Po, yeah, where we finished, uh, where I finished playing. and then uh, had, had a role with the club and sort of uh, had to leave during COVID. So it was a bit of a nightmare at the time, but now it's worked out well. So we've uh, kept the house and we've just stayed there with the family. Um, yeah, during the World Cup and I've been able to come up to the to the games and um, do my work with international rugby players who are based over in Dublin and plenty of uh, work with that going on at the moment as well. So yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been a good couple of months. When you're when you're that close, you know, to to it all, you've been through two World Cup wins, as I said, you've been through those semi finals yourself. You know exactly what it must feel like for the players. How is the semi different from the quarter final? Because you're only one game away from the big dance. Yeah, and I think the other challenge, well, particularly, you know, for our our lot will be coming back from from that performance. I mean, it's a it's a short turnaround as well. It was a massive performance, you know, like we say, it's one for the ages, but you you gotta pick yourself up and, and do it all again and um, you know, guys that have you know, ourselves been in that environment that these are actually the, the trickier ones or the tougher ones in some ways, you know, Ireland that you know, they'd, they'd beaten us, they'd had the rub of the green over us, so that, that would have been easy to prepare for, and, and that's not taking anything away from Argentina, but, you know, in, in all honesty, it's a different, uh, totally different opposition, so you, you've just got to be uh, really good in terms of your preparation and knowing what to do and, and making sure you're, you're still clinical. Yeah, I, I mean, let's be honest, I don't think you'll you'll see the the same level of performance um, this weekend because it's, it's almost a Impossible, you don't admit that as players, but I think as an outsider, you can say that. And we're still going to have to find a, a way to win the game, and and that's um, what they'll be. You know, that's what they'll have to do against an Argentinian team that will be um, well up for it. So, just please explain that a little bit more to us. The same level of performance. It's, I mean, you know, what is that? Is that physical? Is that emotional? Is that is that is that, is that strictly mental? What is it? Yeah, I, I think all, all of that. Like, yeah, like I say, you, you hope and you plan to be like that every week. But no one's no one's perfect. No line of work you, you, you can perform at your at a hundred percent every single week, every time you turn out. Um, and so the ability, you know, particularly to win World Cups, is you you prepare to play like that. But if you're not on. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, that they're not going to be really, really good, but that, that performance last weekend was, I, I think, close to 100%. If, if we're not on at 100%, you can still win rugby games, and, and that's what good teams do, and, you know, that, that's what that's those sort of what ifs that you prepare for. The good teams, they, they might recognise that, and, I, you know, I can reflect on two World Cups where we had knockout games. We knew we weren't on song, but, you know, you, you then just say, right, what, what are we going to do to win? We can still come out of here with a win, and and that's what um, might you know. I'm not saying will happen, but it just might well happen on um, 
Friday. Conrad Smith is with us on the platform, Martin Devlin, Lock and War iOS. Yep, we're in France and we're building up to this semi final. I want to talk to you about your two semi finals. Go back to 2.11 to start with, because that performance against Australia was, again, a really statement performance. It was, it was probably the best we'd played in a hell of a long time. How did you feel going into that particular game? Do you think about the final itself or, or are you able to isolate just that semi? No, I think you're right. Um, they're both very different and um, probably reflect a bit on what I said before. Like Australia were the team we probably feared the most in that World Cup. They had beaten us but, um, prior to the World Cup. They had won Super Rugby with their club teams. They, you know, they were playing really, really good rugby. So that was um, a game you know we prepared really well for, and we, and and like you say, it, it was uh, it was it was our best performance at that World Cup, and it was probably the best performance for, for the team for, um, you know, over a couple of years. So that was one, yeah, where we really prepared for and, and nailed um, in terms of performance. Whereas, uh, you know, look, looking ahead to the, the following semi-final against South Africa, we'd come off a big performance against France. Yes, yes. And, uh, and and that was sort of the performance, like I said before, where we, we, we nothing clicked as, as much as we'd like it to, but it, and it became a real arm wrestle. The rain fell. South Africa, you know, don't always allow you to play the way you want to play. and and um, But, you know, you, you still managed to get a win out of it. And as a player, when you're on the field, just talk us through, I mean, what does it go? Because, you know, guys always say it goes a million miles an hour. You blink, the game's over. You look at the scoreboard and all of a sudden at 65 minutes, you feel like you've been playing for two minutes. What is, what, what is that like? Yeah, I, I think... Um I, I think it, it does. You, you definitely get um, games like that, but but at the same time, you you got to be able to slow yourself down, and I, I think that comes with experience, and 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 that's where you rely on your leadership. Those, those guys, they can't let things go a million miles an hour the whole time. You you got to be processing, you know, what's happening, reflecting on the way the game's going. Those things I talked about before, knowing. You know, is the team on fire and you just keep going or do we need to change things up? Do we need to um, make a few changes in the way we're playing or, or talk about something that's happening in the game? And, you know, that, that as I say, that's sort of uh, what you rely on your experience and, and your leadership to do. In terms of the mental preparation, did you ever have a fear of losing? Um, did you did you kind of envisage winning? Did you did you have to sort of picture things in your mind, any you know, of that kind of visualisation stuff? I think that's um, like a key part of it, and and I think anyone in sort of high performance sport, you, you you get those naturally. You get those feelings. You think about results. You think about what's going to happen at the end of the day. But that's where you sort of always, every time it happens, you allow it. It's normal. It's natural. But you then you just refocus on you know how you're going to get there. How you're going to win the game. You know, and you're not going to win it thinking about lifting the trophy. You're going to win it by you know, starting well, making your tackles, do, do all, the, all the little parts of the game. And that's the sort of, as long as you redirect yourself to what you can control and what you're going to do in the, in the present and the now, then, um, you know, you know, I'm talking from personal experience. Sure. That's yeah. the, uh, the best way to deal with it. And being inside that dressing room for these games with those guys, did a lot of words get spoken at that time? And what did, what did, what did the captain say to you? No, not, not, not by game time. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, ideally a lot of the, the talk and the preparation has been done early in the week and, and now um, not a lot has to be said. Of, of course, you know, like I said before, if, if there's certain small things that, that you need to change or you need to address during a game, then, then that's what you, you will talk about. But um, you want that to be as little as possible and, and hopefully it's, sort of drawing on something you've talked about during the week anyway. So that's, you're never bringing up something completely new. You might just be bringing up a theme that you've had for the week, you know, saying maybe, you know, think, things aren't functioning as we want. How can we how can we survive? What do we need to change? Whether it's, you know, within the set piece or, or the way we're playing generally. And, and that's all you want to sort of limit your conversation to. Might be a silly question, but do you, do, do you dream of glory? Do you dream of scoring a try like a kid would? Do, you, do those things cross your mind? Oh, of course, you, you've been doing that your whole life. So, uh, like I say, I, I, I still you still let that happen. It, it's natural. It's it's fun. It's you know it's what you you never want to take away that level of enjoyment and excitement, and, and that might get you up. But it can also get you pretty nervous. You know, at the same time, you start thinking, you know, you really want that, but gee, what can I you know do about that? So, 
that's what I was sort of saying before. You just sort of every time it creeps into your mind, you you just bring it back to to calm the nerves. That for me, it was just always all right. That that might happen, but for, for right here and now, well, I'm you know what am I going to do if it's a uh, it's a Thursday for these lads. It's it's your recovery and and making sure you're prepared, you know, the best you can. So you, you do all that your your team wants of you for the on the big day. A couple more quick questions. We'll let you go. And thank you so much for your time. You and Mark were joined at the hip. You played so many games together before a big game like this. Did you guys talk specifically about anything? Um, not again. Not not this close to a game. Um, maybe a few little things that we might have picked up um you know later in the week sometimes you know we'd look a bit more at the opposition and and might know a little bit about the opposing whether it's a midfielder or anyone you know that we could be could be marking and and maybe something that the team's been working on during the week that perhaps isn't you know um was worrying us a little and how that might be done better you know in the, in the next day or on game day but yeah it was just you know little things like that um we knew each other well enough that um we didn't have to talk too much more. It was just, uh, you know, both in our own time, preparing ourselves as best we, as the way we knew we, we could. Okay, what happens this weekend then? First semi final, last against Argentina, what happens? <laughs> oh, look, I, I think the, the guys are playing really well. I, um, you know, I, I think it will be tough. And I said before, I wouldn't be surprised if, it, if it's not the sparkling performance and we don't reach the level of performance that we did last week. But I, I still think. You know, there's enough in this team to to get over the line, and Argentina won't, won't make that easy. They, um, you know, they're coming off a big game themselves. They, um, you know, beat a Welsh team that was that was favourites, but uh, they'll. So they've got a lot of passion. They've, they've beaten us, you know, a couple of times now. So you know, that that's going to be different. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm still confident that um, you know the, the guys can to get over the line and, and get to a final. Okay, I'm not just touching a piece of wood, I'm hugging a piece of wood when I say this. Okay, so if we, if we make the final, who's going to win the other semi-final? Oh, that's tough too. I, I actually really think England are going to make this really difficult. Like, South Africa are the better team. I, they're, they're, they were amazing on the weekend. Um, England, yeah, look, they've, they've done enough to win their game, so there's no doubt they had a I've had an easier ride, but I, I actually think back to that that last World Cup. You know, New Zealand had come off. We've come off a massive performance against Ireland. Um, no one had talked about England, and then look what happened. You know, they gave us a fright. They were up for it, and they blew us away, really. So, I uh, I'm not saying that will happen again, but I, I do think that they'll uh, give South Africa probably more trouble than what people are anticipating. Put it that way. Always such a pleasure to talk to you and have you on the show, mate. So very grateful this end. Thank you, Conrad. Not a problem. Devlin. Oh, how does he do that? How does he do that? The Platform.